Man, the ASPCA Raptor really needed a lot of work. We uncovered a lot of stuff in the last videos, but I totally missed this section of the frame. I mean, dude, this thing is rotted out really bad. Uh, I can actually poke my finger through it. Both sides of those rear frame rails were completely shot. Looks like somebody tried to repair it before. And then the total underside of the frame, I don't know if it's dirt that's painted over or if it's actual pitting. I, I don't know what's going on, but this thing needs some attention before we can send it out. Oh man, this is uh, this is pretty sloppy. Uh, I don't know if I'd say this went under the radar, but I just found this now when I cleared the paint off. Oh man, just look at that. You know what I mean? I don't know if this has like salt water damage or what the deal is, but for whatever reason in this back corner, it was just really, really focused damage. So, and up here too, I'm gonna have to, I'll see what I can do about that. I don't, I don't know how the hell that happened, but it's gotta be fixed. Wait till you guys see this frame. This is uh, this is one of the worst conditions I think I've ever seen in my life. This is this is really bad. I cut out these entire rear sections on both sides. Uh, in here, you can see some flakes from like rot. But tapping down here, this feels solid. So I'm hoping that that's from the underside of this. I think from water getting in these pipes and stuff. That's why this portion was kind of rotted. So I think I'm either gonna I'll probably build that whole area up with weld before I put the new pipes in. But dude, look at this. So this is the one section that was here. It looks nasty as it is, but wait till you see the inside. Oh, dude. Somebody tried to very sloppily patch weld this and uh, you can see all the welding wire and stuff in there and just did a really not a very good job. There was a huge clump of weld under the bottom there. I think the only reason this thing was probably holding up is just because this is such a reinforced area, you know, with this gusset in here and all. But, phew, man, so I don't think we could have ever repaired this without entirely taking those sections out. I don't, I don't think it would have been safe again. Let's see this side over here. All the surrounding metal is really, it, it looks just fine. I think we should be okay. But, man, phew. Not good, man. Up here, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I can do with that too. Man. Man, working with dirty metals really makes welding a pain in the ass. I'm like an okay welder, but if I don't have like clean pieces of steel, you guys are gonna see here in a second. My, my welds just come out ugly as shit. But you know what? They always hold, so uh, there it is. It is ugly, like I said, but it's gonna hold. That piece of pipe that I bent, you can see there was a little wrinkle in it. Uh, I packed it with sand. I just got a new pipe bender and I was kind of testing it out. I had to cut off the, um, the brake pedal stay piece here and uh, re-weld that back on. And I think when it's sandblasted and powder coated, it's not gonna look, you know, quite as bad. All those chunked up, you know, welds and stuff from before looked even worse. So it just is what it is, man. It, they, <laughs> they're not gonna be great. They're ugly. And uh, yeah, that's that. All right, now that frame was really bad. You ready for this though? I just got back from Bonehead Performance. It's all powder coated. I think it looks pretty damn good. Check it out. There it is, man. Got it in that battleship gray. It looks freaking sweet. Bonehead does an incredible job, man. This looks tremendous. They told me it did have a lot of rust and pitting on the bottom, but it wasn't so far gone that it wasn't usable. They used a special primer on it, and that is supposed to help prevent any further rust, especially a lot of times on like older frames and ones with uh, damage, like you'll get stuff on the inside where it rusts. Uh, and that the, uh, the special primer they use is supposed to help prevent that. Uh, here is in the back. I really don't think it looks that bad. This was the side that was really ugly. And you can see how it came out. Uh, up in here, that's never gonna be pretty. That was that area I had to like pile up the welds and reinforce. Nobody's really gonna see in there though. Uh, as long as it's strong, that's really all I care about. Looks pretty good though. 
this side looks much nicer. This is the side that, you know, I had a little bit of practice with the welder. You come around this side, you can see it's really not, it's not horrible, man. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's going to be nice and strong. Rest of the frame came out really, really nice. The color is going to look so good. Wait until you guys see the lime green and the contrast that it has with this, man. It is crazy. So these are my boxes filled with parts. I couldn't help it, man. I already opened up the Nerf bars and I put the nets in there. Man, they look freaking awesome. Uh, I got the subframe right here. I just wanted to show you how these parts come. So if you guys order or send your stuff to Bonehead Performance for anything coded, you'll see, I wanted to show you guys. Uh, they take a lot of time and care in what they do. That is our Cerakoted header, big gun header. But you can see all of the parts are individually wrapped and uh, they do this in bubble wrap and stuff so that if they ship it to you, it's not gonna come you know, with parts of, you know, vibrating against each other and stuff in shipment. Or even if you're picking it up in, in transit, it's just uh, they, they, they go the extra step to make sure that your stuff stays really nice. So to me, this is like Christmas, man. All these fresh parts, dude, the lime green pops so much. There is a neon uh, fluorescence. I don't know if that's like the base coat or how they do it at Bonehead, but this, I guarantee you the, the camera is just not gonna do it justice, man. It is, it pops, man. And against that frame color, it's just gonna look so good, dude. I can't wait. But this is just, like I said, this is like Christmas for me, man. All these parts, there's a lot of parts in these two boxes. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of open everything up and lay it out and we can check this stuff out together. Oh man, this stuff came out awesome. I really, I'm really happy with the color choices that I made here. It's such a shame because I know that that lime green will not pop on the screen like it does in person. I can see just looking at the screen on the camera. It is, it's quite a bit different. It looks like a teal kind of green it still looks like, uh, kind of cool on the screen, but I'm telling you, in person, it is this like fluorescent green and it looks so cool. All of these small parts in here is a color called Blackjack, which is a really nice, uh, kind of like a matte, almost semi-gloss, but it's more of a matte black. And then these heel guards came out really nice. This is what's called Mini Texture. I like that. It's one of my favorite colors from Bonehead because it has like a small texture to it, but it's smooth enough that it's easy to clean. It doesn't, you know, attract dirt or if you're wiping with a cloth, it doesn't pick up lint like a lot of um, like texture black does. But I got the bumper in that same texture. These are great for bumpers and like stuff where you're going to be grabbing because you get a little bit of texture. The grab bar looks way better. I thought this looked really crappy and raw. That was that kind of like cheaper grab bar, but it came out pretty nice. Pegs are in texture black as well. Uh, got this Cerakoted silver. That's that big gun header. That's going to look really nice. All the other stuff, like I said, is the uh, blackjack color. And it just, when it's all together, I think the contrast is gonna be really nice. Now we're still waiting on the engine components. So I have the cases, cylinder head, all that stuff, still a bonehead. Uh, all that stuff is getting Cerakoted. I like to have the engine done first before I start the build. So I'm gonna uh, wait for that stuff. And I'm also waiting for the suspension to come in from Rocket Ron. Uh, we're just waiting on some parts, you know, with uh, what's going on with the economy and stuff. We got some part shortages going on. So you know me, man, I don't like to sit around and wait. So what I wanna do is some custom stuff that it would slow down the build process when we're doing the uh, total build together. And now uh, one of the things that I want to do is I've got a custom headlight set up for this thing. I think it's going to look really freaking sweet. Uh, we'll start with that because that would slow down the build process. Uh, let me show you what I'm thinking of. All right. First thing I want to do is fit up the plastic so we can make sure everything fits right. Uh, before I do that, the first thing I like to do when I get my stuff back from powder coat is trace all of my threaded holes. So I have these little thread tracing kits. It's basically like a tap but it's specifically designed to clean up threads, not cut new threads. And uh, you just kind of, you want to make sure it doesn't cross thread. Honestly, by hand is probably the best way to do this if you're not, you know, handy. Um, but this kind of just goes through and it cleans up the threads because uh, depending where you go, powder coat can get stuck in there or sometimes after they sandblast stuff. There's kind of like an abrasive texture left behind and it can make uh, screwing in bolts and stuff just difficult. So uh, doing this just, it helps a ton. I just like to go over all of my powder coated parts first thing and get that done. 
I'll also put the subframe in place because I want to fit up the back plastics as well. And I'm going to tighten these down using my new fancy torque wrench because I don't plan on removing the subframe. Man, it's a strange feel using this. I'm used to the click clicking style. This will tell you where you are torque wise. And then when the red light comes on, that's telling you you're there. Interesting. The way of the future. All right, I'm gonna get everything in place here just loosely so we can fit up the plastics. Most of this stuff is gonna be coming back off. You guys know when I do my full build videos, I like to have everything laying out. I just think that's, it's cool to do that. All right, let's fit up these beautiful plastics that have zero damage to them. I actually wanted to put new plastics on this, but I can't find any new OEM plastics. And the Meyer replacements, they're the only company that I could find that make reproduction plastics for the 660. They kind of have a different look and I don't really like them. They, especially like in the front, they don't have like the separate grill. It comes incorporated and I, I don't like the look of it. These are clean enough though that I think um, when the graphics and stuff are on there, it's still gonna look really good. All right, now as I'm fitting up these plastics, I noticed something that stuff like this kind of uh, makes me question the workmanship of the previous owners uh, whenever I see things like this. So I have all this fitting up properly. And uh, if you look in the front here at this front mounting hole, you can see uh, it's not quite right. So right here is where the hole is. And this is maybe, I don't know, like three quarters of an inch back. And if you look at this tab, I was kind of suspect to begin with that that might be bent back. So that's what happened. This is bent back. But instead of, you know, bending this straight, which is a fairly, you know, very easy job, really, they just drilled a new hole in the plastic and moved the entire plastics back and uh, they abandoned some other mounting tabs because I guess, you know, once everything moves back a little bit, things just get out of whack. The plastics are, you know, you're pulling them in different positions and warping stuff, but just little stuff like that. I'm not like trying to rip up the, the, the previous owner or anything, but that's like uh, little basic stuff that if you can't fix that, it's, that's probably why the rest of this machine was in such bad condition. And there were so many like really just, just hack fixes. Uh, but <laughs> this is why I like to do the fit up. Uh, phase before a build because little stuff like that you know you just make everything straight and then when it comes time for the final assembly uh, everything will go together nice and easy Good there now. Gotta fit up the grab bar to get the back plastics test fit. I also want to mount up the foot pegs and the heel guards because the heel guards actually have a tab on them that's gonna help us make sure that uh, the, the plastics are nice and aligned. And I did sharpen these. They were really, really dull. All right, now I'm planning on using through bolts for the heel guards. So I'm gonna put the Nerf bars in place. And uh, these heel guards are GYTR. And what's nice about that, that's the Yamaha Performance brand. They already have holes drilled in the pegs for this stuff. So you don't have to go drilling new holes. Now I will be taking these back off. We're just fitting these up right now. But this is a place where I like to use nylocks because the possibility for these vibrating loose is definitely real in this area. And if you're unfamiliar, a nylock has a little plastic ring built into the bolt. And that plastic ring is just a little bit tighter than the threads. So when you thread this on, it grips onto the threads of the bolt. And they're, they're pretty much never going to come vibrate loose. They're, they're really solid. Now, one of the nice things about running heel guards is this. So we've got like the floppy fender syndrome going on. But with this mounting tab down here, it really helps bring up, damn it. It really helps bring up these fenders and just kind of make them look perky again. 
Now to me, that makes a major difference in a machine to making it look new again. I mean, nobody wants floppy fenders. Now we've got the classic issue of the little tabs on the rear plastics being broken off. This side, it's still here, amazingly. That would normally hook up like so with a, uh, an eight millimeter bolt like that. Usually these are long gone though. Um, in this case, we've got one. So I have a fix for that. I mean, we're gonna address this a little bit later. Now I can come up front and test fit our updated grill cover. I'd be really careful with this thing, even though I don't think it's necessarily fragile. I just, <laughs> I don't know. I just wanna be careful with it. I don't think I'm actually gonna bolt it in place. I'm just going to set it and make sure that everything lines up. It's looking pretty good. All right, now here's where things are gonna get crazy, even insane, if you will. But I figured if we're going to update the grill to look like a more modern Raptor, we have to get some brand new factory takeoff Raptor 700 headlights. And uh, I think this is just going to update the look of the machine entirely. Man, oh dude, they may even mount up like a lot easier than I thought. So what we're gonna have to do is, you know, the headlight brackets obviously aren't going to fit perfectly uh, out of the box, I wouldn't think anyways. They actually, this might not be as difficult as I thought it was gonna be, but um, we'll make the brackets fit, whether we have to change and weld up the tabs or, you know, however I have to do it, I will make these so that they fit. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not gonna work <laughs> in the factory spot. Uh, but I'll make these work, and I think this will really, really update the look of the machine. You know, believe it or not, this one bolt hole up here actually mat matches up, like, really nicely. I think if I put a longer through bolt in here, I'll be able to hang the light really close. Wow. That was easy. Now, if I can just rig this up so that I can step back and take a look at this thing and we can actually mock up some, some brackets for this. I'd say that looks pretty good. All right, I think I might have this figured out. So I have the bolt up here I'm utilizing. That's the only OEM location that actually matched up. And then uh, this mounting point back here, I think a bull bar clamp that clips, it'll, it'll bolt right around the frame and then a little piece will come up uh, right about here, and this should mount right up to that, and that'll be really easy. Uh, I have to wait for that clamp to come, though. I just ordered it on Amazon. It's one-day delivery, so it'll be here tomorrow, and then I want to run in the back here from this mounting point some sort of bracket, probably from here down to this mounting location, some sort of thing like that, like underneath another support, but I don't want to go uh, de designing that lower bar until I get the clamp up here. I think once those two mounting points are in place, I'll have a better idea of exactly where it's going to sit, and uh, we can move forward from there. Uh, by the way, this radiator, uh, I did. Uh, this is this li it's linked in the description of some of the videos. So if you do buy this, these tabs did need to be bent to make it fit. You can actually see how I bent them, which is a small mod to have to make, but I did want to mention that. While we're waiting for those headlight parts, we can come to the back here and take care of the tab problem that we got going on. So this is the side that's still here. I'm gonna shave that off and make it match this side. And I'll probably clean this side up too because there's some remnants from that tab still there. And uh, I think the easiest way to do that will be by removing the plastics. And while we're working on the plastics, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this melt mark from the exhaust. Just kind of trim that out and make it look like it was never there before. All 
All right, now for these rear fender plastics, I'm planning on keeping this pretty simple and basically just making a little bracket right here, bend the tab back so it matches the contour of the plastic, and we'll use a rubber bushing to press against this. And I may do a through bolt, but I'm unsure yet. Let's see how it holds up if it feels nice and sturdy just with the bracket. Making the bracket should be pretty easy. I've got this aluminum left over from when I made the airbox for the Banshee. It's a tenth of an inch thick. It's a pretty nice solid piece of aluminum. That should be just fine. And I've also got this bumper kit that I picked up off Amazon and using probably something like this on each of the pieces will be nice to press up against the plastic. So this should be fairly easy to do. I'm gonna use all basic tools here and we'll get it cut out. These don't really have to be like ultra precise. I'm gonna make these seven eighths of an inch wide and I will make them two and three quarters inch long. Now a bandsaw would be really nice, and this is probably a pretty bad idea, but I got these little cutoff wheels. They're like mini saw blades that go into the Dremel, and I feel like these will cut through aluminum really nicely. So I put the Dremel in the vise, and I feel like I'll get good control by manipulating the piece instead of the actual tool. So I figure we'll give it a shot. We got plenty of aluminum here. I can try again if I mess up. Well, that did work really well for making a straight line. Had really good control and everything. Come on, man, what the f Well, that did work really well for cutting a straight line. I think this Dremel is just a little bit underpowered because it was bogging down, but that's actually really nice. All right, well, there's our pieces. They came out pretty consistent. I think they look good, nice straight lines. I'd say the consensus on these, these are a great attachment. I think they cut through aluminum really nicely. You just need a more powerful Dremel. This Dremel, like I said, was, I'm pretty sure this was 20 bucks and uh, it's been pretty well abused. It's starting to get kind of tired. But anyways, uh, I would definitely recommend these things and I bet you they cut plastic really, really well. So I'll have to try that out in the future. But for now, let's do some finishing on these things. I know we said we'd be using simple tools and uh, technically this is kind of a simple tool, but uh, not something that I would say most people have. You could finish the edges with a file. You don't even have to do this. You won't even have to finish the edges if you don't want to. But uh, my pop got this for me and I feel like this is gonna make the job really, really easy. All right, that was pretty easy. What's crazy is when I was using that water jet at my buddy's machine shop, we were cutting out much more complex tabs in like a fraction of a, well, minute. And um, they come out cleaner and more consistent too. But not everybody has a $100,000 water jet. So I'm gonna put a slight bend in these to match the contour of the plastic. It's gonna go little by little. Can always do a little bit more. All right, let's see what we got. Right like that. Looks pretty good. But that bumper on there, it should hold it right there. And remember guys, these don't have to be super strong. This is just plastic support to keep them looking perky. All right, let's put our bumper in here. We'll mount it up, see how it fits. All right, let's see what this looks like. You can actually see this side is just slightly higher than this side, because this one doesn't have the bracket on there yet. So they definitely do work. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. They're nice and solid. The fenders can come up. You can see it gives support underneath. I think that's nice. 
Nice little upgrade right there. Won't have the floppy fenders going around. Success. I wanted to stop to thank you for making it this far into the video. I also wanted to thank the companies that are making Project ASPCA Raptor a possibility. As you can see, it's in need of a lot of help, and without these companies, I think she'd be left for dead. Thank you to Rocket Ron Suspension, Rocky Mountain ATV, DRW Performance, Power Sports Nation, Ramosi Throttles, Bonehead Performance Coatings, Full Flight Racing, and Kenda Tire. These are all companies I trust, and most of them I use on a regular basis. Company links and discount codes will be listed in the description below. If you're enjoying the video so far and looking for a way to help out, giving the video a thumbs up, leaving a comment below, or subscribing to the channel all help out a ton. Products and tools in the video are listed in the description below, and purchasing from those links does help me out a lot. I get a small kickback from that, and there's no extra cost to you. Voodoo Banshee t-shirts and hoodies are now available for sale. The link for that will also be in the description below. And if you're looking to support the channel even further, there is the option to join. All channel members get guaranteed responses to their YouTube comments. All right, guys, I am done talking. Let's get back to the video. All right, now our clamps came in for the headlights. So let's take a look at those. Okay, guys, so I've got you at the front of the headlight here. We're mounted up at this point right here. And then these little P-clamps I got, or uh, bull bar clamps, they look like this. I think this is going to work out perfectly. If I mount this on the frame right here, boom, that should mount up literally perfectly like it was made for it. Um, and this is going to be super strong too. These are like solid aluminum. So I'm going to bolt one of these up and we'll see how it fits. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make the front post to hang our light on. I'm gonna make it out of this half inch bolt. So first thing I have to do is machine this down. All right, so there's our pieces. I'm gonna clean up the threads real quick. Run it through this die, because it's probably a little messed up. Now I'll put the clamp in here, bore this out just a little bit so we can thread it. There we go. And we'll take our piece and it threads right in. All I gotta do is tighten that up and there's our post. I'll have to put a little bit of paint on that too. And now this headlight should slide right in place. Boom, look at that. All right, now we've got one other mounting point right here. And this one I think is pretty critical because it's going to keep it from, you know, rocking back and forth and flopping up and down. So um, uh, this one I want to be pretty solid. I'm going to make it out of steel. And I don't think it's going to be too bad. I'm going to use this bar stock. And I'm going to bolt this directly to our mount up here. So the headlight bracket will all be attached to that one piece. And I think if I put it right there like that and bend the tab so that it bolts up right here, this is nice, thick steel. Uh, I don't think this will be moving around too much. That should be a nice support for this headlight, and it won't be that hard to make either. Just two basic bends, drill some holes, and we should be good to go. All right, so here's our bracket. What I'm planning to do is mount right to the clamp. I'll, I'll tap and um, put a bolt through that. And then you can see it comes right here to the end of this uh, light and then bolt that up right there. And that should be a really solid light fixture. All right, small change of plans. I had initially wanted to mount right up to the little P bracket that we put on there and come straight across but it has interference with one of the through bolts that actually holds the clamp on there. So I'm gonna go to the original mounting point right here and I made the bracket, if it's perfect now. And what I did is I drilled out this, this was an M6, I upsized it to an M8 because I want this to be strong and we'll get a little bit more clamping power, power with an M8 down here. And then up here, put a little spacer in place and I just threaded right into this steel because it's thick enough steel that you can get a couple threads in there and it should be plenty strong. This doesn't need to be super tight. All right, that's pretty good. It's nice and solid. I mean, you can shake the whole machine by it. 
and we've got the rubber boots on all of the mounting points. So uh, our bulb should be, you know, safe from vibrations and impacts and stuff. I'm pretty happy with that. All I have to do now is just some finishing work. I'll round these edges out up here on this side too. Just clean that up and I'll throw a coat of satin black on there to match the headlight. Those headlights came out really good. It took quite a while to get the second bracket to match up perfectly with the other one, but it looks pretty good right now. So I wanna move on to covering the seat and uh, replacing the trashy seat foam that we have. But before we do that, I'm going to paint our front valance so that this can dry as we're doing that. Uh, I'm gonna do this the same way that I did my Raptor 700 years ago. That came out really good and it was really durable. So um, this is scuffed and primed um, with, I scuffed it with a red Scotch-Brite it's really all you need, and I'm just going to be using Rust-Oleum. Uh, it's made for plastic. This is fiberglass, but I think it's going to work just fine. Then I'll put a clear coat on top, and uh, I imagine this will hold up just fine. All right, now we've got this beautiful seat pan here. Really, that's no word of a lie. This is actually a very nice seat pan. This is probably, like, the nicest piece on the entire machine. Like, like no joke, man. I cleaned this thing up, and it's... It's pretty nice. There's almost nothing wrong with it. Even the rubber bumpers and everything were all on there and they're not dry rotted, which is really, really nice. So if you guys saw the condition of this seat before, it was atrocious, man. And like when I took the seat cover off, I went to pull the staples out of the bottom of this thing and I didn't even have to pry them out. They just like disintegrated. As soon as I started pulling on the seat cover, they just like fell apart. I'm, I'm not even, I've never seen anything like it. But I do still have the old foam right here. And uh, that's, it's pretty, it's trash, man. It's not just like, it's intact, but you can see it's like eaten away and stuff. And I, I didn't, I didn't want to reuse that. And I think it's, it's really floppy and it's junk. And I also, I also have the seat cover right here. You can see um, it's not really in that bad of shape. So it, it is an OEM cover. Uh, it's the original cover actually, I believe. And um you know, I like to help out the community and stuff. So a lot of the takeoff parts and stuff, like people ask me what I do with them. Um, so I figured I would offer this stuff for sale. Um, I'm not exactly sure what to ask for this stuff. The seat, the seat foam, I think is too far gone. Uh, I would feel like a real scam artist if I, if I tried to sell that to anybody, but the seat cover, um, I mean, this is in pretty good shape. It needs a little bit of work, but it could be stitched up. And being that it's original and it's a discontinued part, uh, I would say, I don't know what these things go for from Yamaha, probably like $120, $130, uh, but you can't get, really get them anymore. So they're pro it's probably worth, I would say like, like a buck 99, $199. Uh, because of the condition, I would, uh, I would say like, um, uh, like hundred, hundred, 130 bucks, I think shipped. And, um, yeah, I'm just trying to get like, you know, what I put into this, this machine out of it. I think that's only fair and, you know, help somebody out in the uh, community by giving them a nice seat cover. But I mean, you can see it's, it's not bad. Anyways, we do have a brand new seat foam for this thing, and I've got a really cool um, seat cover as well. Both of them are from Moto Seat. I'm going to show you guys to show those to you guys in a second. I did find one issue with the little stays in the back, though. Well, one of them, anyways, is broken, and I have a fix for it. Uh, let's fix it right now. You can see this one little stay has a crack. I don't want to flop it back and forth too much because I don't actually want it to fall off. The other side is still good. I don't think that has anything to do with it being brittle or, or, or you know, something like that. I think this was probably dropped and stepped on or some kind of force made that break off. I think this plastic has actually got good integrity. So I think what I'm gonna do is we've got a nice kind of platform in here to put like a fender washer and I can run a bolt straight through, drill a hole in the top and then the bolt will pull that together and that'll reinforce the entire thing. And then I think just to make both sides match, we'll drill a hole in this one too and put the bolt through that because I just like it when stuff looks like it's supposed to be that way. You know, if only one was done, it's a dead giveaway, even though who has bolts going through their seat posts. All right, now an M6 bolt almost fits in these holes perfectly, but it's a little bit snug, which is actually good. So I'm gonna thread those after I drill them and that way the bolt will thread in and it should give it even more structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill both of these out and I'm gonna have to be careful with this one here because like I said, I'd like for it to stay on here and that might be tough, but we'll see if we can finesse it. All right, nice thing about working with plastic is it's pretty easy to drill. OK, 
Okay, that's straight through. All right, now this could be the challenging part. Running this tap through here without having this rip off. Oh, well, that was surprisingly easy. All right, let me drill this other side real quick. This one I can come through this side. All right, let's run these in. Being that this is plastic, this will probably almost be like its own Loctite. Okay. All right, now we'll come up top, put a fender washer and a locking nut. All right. So those are locked down up there. And now those are nice and strong. These are this is probably even stronger than stock, honestly. We'll give it a test fit real quick. Oh, there they go. You can see they popped right through here. You have unlimited space down here pretty much. So it doesn't matter that these are a little bit longer, but that's a solid fix. All right, so now that our seat posts are fixed, Got a brand new seat foam from Moto Seat. Nice and squishy. And also from Moto Seat, got our seat cover. It's gonna match the color scheme of the Raptor nicely. Now putting these seat foams on is really easy. I did the one on the Voodoo Banshee as well. And you literally just put some spray tack down and put it in place. It's pretty, pretty much as easy as that. And then the seat cover is really what holds this thing in place. So let's go ahead and spray it and uh, start doing the seat cover. All right, so I have to do this over the trash can because this stuff is messy. It gets all over the place. This is 3M Super 77, really common adhesive. You can pick this up at Lowe's, Walmart, Amazon, pretty much anywhere. It doesn't have to be crazy. Really, uh, what holds the seat the most is the seat cover being on there. So just give it a light spray. Pretty much all you need. All right, then we'll take our foam and literally just put it in place. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Sometimes you wanna make sure that the edges overlap like around the plastic and you're pretty much ready to start installing your seat cover. All right, so I got my staple gun here. This is a great staple gun for putting on seats. I'll put this in the description below. Uh, I picked it up at my local Ace Hardware store. I use the T50 staples. They're just the right depth. And it just makes it super easy. It's not like the manual one where your hand gets all worn out. All you got to do is press the button. As long as the, um, the safety is pressed up against the seat, it'll pop the staples in really quickly. Definitely worth buying that. Literally, you do one seat and you'll be, you'll be glad you have it. I like to use the table to help keep it nice and tight. And then I'll use the gun, the nose of the gun. I push down and then drag the material. And that helps keep it nice and tight. And the other thing I do is I work my way back. You don't want to go too far on one side or too far on the other side because a lot of times what happens is you go a little bit too much to one side or the other side and then it doesn't, it's not even. If you go back and forth, you can prevent that usually. I'm really not the best at this. <laughs> then one last thing I do is come in with a razor blade, usually a fresh one is your best bet. Makes it a lot easier. And just trim away any excess seat material. This actually came out really nice. So let's uh, see what it looks like on the machine. Pretty sweet. Now I'm not gonna lie, this isn't exactly the color that I had in mind. 
Uh, it's one of those things when you're doing a custom build that's really difficult is, you know, you're ordering all these colors. You want your graphics to match the fabrics and the seat cover, the Nerf bar nets. It's just, it's really difficult to get all of the right colors just right. Usually they're like a shade or two off, but usually once the graphics are on there, it all kind of comes together. I do often fantasize about getting all of the colors exactly right for one of these builds one of these times. Anyways, there's one more thing that I want to take care of with you guys, and it's in this box. So let's open it up. So just like with a lot of the other stuff on this machine, I discovered that the swing arm had a little bit more damage to it than what I had noticed the first time around. It has some cracks in the welds and a couple of the holes, specifically the ones that adjust the carrier, are completely blown out. So it is fixable, um, but PSN was kind enough to send me another swing arm. They had a couple Raptors that they got in. So we got another brand new pre-owned swing arm and this one, doesn't look like it has any cracks. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is put some new bearings in here. So first thing is we'll just get these out of here. I probably won't put the new ones in until, oh God, these are nasty. Until we're done cleaning everything. But it's easier to clean uh, while taking these out first. Got a seized one, big surprise. Look at this pancake bearing, man. It is like totally just rusted in place. Pretty sure these can be reused no problem though. All right, this is definitely a candidate for the press. I don't feel like fighting with this thing. These rusty swing arms, man, they can really be a pain in the ass. Wow, those were some stubborn bearings. So, I mean, I'm putting new bearings in my quad, but you know, I just wanna pass along some of these good parts. So I figured I'd resell these too. Thinking like uh, new, a new kit's like 60 bucks for the swing arm. So I don't know, like 35, 40 bucks maybe. You know, I drive a Silverado guys. So things are really expensive to fill with gas. I'm just trying to make ends meet here, but definitely, you know, not trying to rip anybody off. All right, so my objective here really is to just clean this thing and make it look good. And I was taking out these jam nuts here to adjust the carrier. Both of these, which are blown out on the, uh, the, the carrier that came with the Raptor. That's what, was one of the big reasons I wanted to uh, replace this thing. And I was pulling them out. You can see I just got them started. And I noticed they're both seized now. Not seized, but uh, they're, they're really tight. And I think, I'm, I'm going to guess, like, dude, that's, that's pretty bad. It feels like the bolt's about to break. I'm going to guess that because this is aluminum and these are steel, a lot of times these oxidize. And actually, if you look closely, you can see the oxidation on that bolt. And you can see there's a good bit left to come out. So you gotta be careful here. I don't wanna end up with the same problem that the other swing arm has. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of heat and hopefully that'll make things move a little bit smoother. But I did wanna show you guys because I, I just have a feeling that this is a common issue with the Raptor 660. I really just wish they would do the roundhouse style carrier like Honda. Man, it's still tight, but it's moving at least. I just don't want it to break. Oh, it's pretty bad. I think I got it now. Well, it looks like there's still, I don't know if that's, a, I'm guessing that's aluminum in the threads. It looks like the threads are still in there, but some, maybe half of them got, I don't know. Bad design though, definitely bad design. <sighs> oh man, I'm getting into that bolt breaking zone. Some of you guys may not realize how hard I'm pushing on this. I'm pretty strong and uh, I used to have issues with breaking bolts like a lot until I, you know, got a good feel for it. This is definitely in that zone of about to break, so I got to be careful. All right, I got them both out and you can see they both did the same thing. They have that one little section where it pulled the threads out. Now, luckily, 
the threads are in this entire section, so it's a it's deep. And I looked in there, at least half of it is still threaded. I don't know if you guys will be able to see in there. I think we'll be okay. I'm gonna retrace those, and if if it's if I really need to, I can upsize those. But I'm I'm trying to avoid doing that. That was really the whole purpose of not the whole purpose, but part of the purpose of getting another swing arm. But um, <laughs> I guess it'll be what it'll be. I can always, you know, even with the other one, I can fill that with weld and uh, re-thread them or, or do something to fix that. But man, phew, pain in the ass. All right, now that we have those out, I'm going to go ahead and give it the poor man's sandblast with the little Scotch-Brite wheels. These things are awesome for cleaning up aluminum, and they're really nice for getting in where the bearings go and stuff, just cleaning out those inner races and stuff like this. Uh, that's, that's still hot. But uh, yeah, it's a nice way to clean stuff up. Check this out. And then for little tight spots like in this corner, got a little wire wheel. Check that out. You can see exactly where I went to, where it gets dirty again. Those little wheels really make easy work of this though. I'm not sure there's any other way that you could clean them that well. All right, well this cleaned up pretty nicely with the Scotch-Brite. There's one other thing I like to do with my aluminum stuff, and that is hit it with some aluminum brightener. This stuff works great for uh, just making aluminum look a lot better and it gives it a nice even finish and it's just really easy to use i use this on the kfx 450r like the entire thing because that has an aluminum frame and it brought it up like brand new you spray this on let it sit for like 30 seconds to a minute and i like to scrub it a little bit and then rinse it off and uh, usually it comes out pretty nice Now, unfortunately, I lost the audio for this part, but you can see the swing arm came out really, really clean. This thing looks like brand spanking new. So we're gonna go ahead and put some new bearings in here. I wanted to give a huge shout out to Rocky Mountain ATV for sending these Tusk swing arm bearings. Bearings are one of those things that can add up on any project, especially if you're doing an entire machine. And Rocky Mountain helping out with the bearings helps out tremendously. So if you guys need any bearings for pretty much any machine, Tusk usually has them. Tusk is the Rocky Mountain ATV brand. Definitely go ahead and check them out for all of your bearing needs. All right, let's get these things packed and installed in the swing arm. I'm gonna pack these bearings before I put them in place. I already did the one, you can see my hands are they're pretty greased up. So definitely recommend putting some gloves on if you're gonna do this. Take some bearing grease and lay it out on your palm. And then you take your bearing and you see the little gap between the cage and the outer race. We're gonna jam the grease right in there. The easiest way to do these is you put your finger through like that. And then you just kinda keep taking little scoops of the grease and it's jamming the grease in between the cage and getting all around your needle bearings and the idea is to just fill that cage up with grease as much as you can because bearings in this area are known to get really dried out and then you have bearings coming out like what we pulled out of this thing. So the best we can do to avoid that, we want to have the best chances we can. Just a very messy job. All right, that one's all done. Usually, if you have it packed right, it'll be difficult to roll the cage anymore because there's grease stuffed in there, but that's that's what you want. All right, this one's done, and a good sign that it's finished is one, you can actually feel that it's heavier because it's packed with grease, and when you shake it, nothing. Here is another needle bearing that has not been packed. You can hear those needles rattling around in there. That's how you know it's not greased. All right, now we're gonna install these things the old school way and just smash them into place, which is, Usually just fine, especially after I've cleaned the bearings, the inner races and everything. They usually go in pretty easily. I'll put this clamp in the back. That just holds everything in place nicely. And usually you can just kind of tap them into place. We use a socket that is the same outside diameter. Yeah, these, just, these are tapping right in. All right, bearings and seals are in there. 
Now we can do the satisfying collar insertion. And we've got a little spacer that goes up here. Make sure your uh, lips of your seals are not rolled. That one's good to go. Shit. And this one has the cups. Come on, you motherfucker. Shit's all greasy. Nice. All right, man, swing arm came out really nice. I'm super happy with that. Bearings are good to go. That's all stuff that would have taken time, you know, when you're doing the entire assembly. If you get the bearings in there, and you know, that's a lot of work. I mean, I understand why a lot of companies, like when you buy used parts and stuff, they come the way that they do. They're usually dirty, the bearings, um, they're, they're not gonna be new or anything like that. And it's because of the amount of time that it takes to do this stuff. I mean, this swing arm alone, probably between cleaning it, getting out the, the stuck bolts and getting out the old bearings and all, it probably was like two hours, I would say. And then not to mention getting the old carrier brake stay off was, this thing was seized. Uh, I needed to use a puller to get it off of there. I had to use heat and everything. And then cleaning this thing up was a nightmare. Not a nightmare, but it just took a lot of time. Uh, granted, that one was really far gone. There's so much crud and stuff built up on there. But, you know, if you added all that stuff in, this would be so much more expensive to buy. That's that's why they just usually pull them off, put them in a box, and ship them to you. So you got to do all that work. It's just really time-consuming. It'll look really good, though, when it's on there. And I got a brand-new billet carrier. It's a uh, dual row on both sides. That should be a nice, solid upgrade over the stock one. Plus, it's so much easier to just get that with the bearings and all. It was only 40 bucks. I mean, you really can't beat that. Now, I did want to do one thing before we end this video, that uh, the valance on the front, the paint should be dry on there. I want to throw it on there and we'll get a good idea of what this quad's going to look like. All right, here we go, man. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm not going to lie. Just got to be really gentle. It's only dried for maybe 12 hours. I like to let these things sit for like a couple days really before I start handling them. So I'm just going to kind of set it in place if I can. It isn't exactly a perfect match. It's a little bit almost like of an off-white, but I think it'll blend nicely, especially once the graphics and stuff are on there. I think it's gonna look really good. I can always repaint it. Uh, I didn't think that the whites would be different like that. I've got the brightest white that uh, I, I could find. But anyways, yeah, man, I, I, it's definitely a unique look. Like there's, there's no other Raptor 660 out there that looks like this, at least that I know of. I mean, maybe there is, who knows. But I think it's gonna look really trick. I can't wait to get the rest of the parts on here. I still gotta clean the plastics up. There's a, a couple other things that I have to do uh, that I'm gonna do before I do the initial assembly. You know, pack the bearings in the hubs and you know stuff like that. All that stuff takes a lot of time. There's a lot of stuff that I don't show in these videos. Uh, you know, like I restored the linkage, restored the fan motor, uh, the thermostat, just like little stuff. There's so many little pieces that go into these machines and a lot of the, it's just too much work for me to show you guys. But a lot of, it just takes a lot, a lot of work. So when you guys are watching these videos, I know sometimes it's like, oh, like how's you do it so quick and how's it look so easy, man. There's so much time and effort that's put in behind the scenes and off camera uh, that goes into these things. It's just crazy. But in the end, it's all worth it, man. And I can't wait to start assembling this thing. I can't wait to ride this thing. I'm a big fan of the Raptor 660. So it's one of my all time favorite quads. I mean, as a kid, uh, it was one of, it was the second big quad I ever had. I had a blown second gear and stuff. And I ended up doing a ton of uh, work to that thing. I just love that quad so much. So I'm super excited about this. I'm excited to share it with you guys. And uh, hopefully my suspension and my engine parts will be here any day now so we can get into building the rest of this quad. So until the next one, guys, I love all y'all. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And if you're looking for more videos like this, please consider subscribing. If you're looking to support the channel even further, there is the option to join. Until the next video, peace out.